ready to get rolling. I hope everyone can see my screen okay. Uh, let me give you a, a, a turn my webcam on real quickly just to see so you can see who I am. So it should pop up. This is me. Uh, glad everybody could join us. So I would like to spend about 30, 35 minutes or so to go over a really uh, useful financial research database that the library makes available to uh, students, staff, and faculty at Appalachian called Morningstar. Um, I don't. I assume some of you have heard of Morningstar before, but if you haven't, it, Morningstar has been around for decades as an investment analysis uh, service, and they built their reputation on mutual fund analysis. Uh, the Morningstar five-star rating, you may have heard that. Um, but they've moved into doing regular uh, stock or company analysis, exchange-traded funds, and the like. So um, we'll just spend some time going over the basics of that. My main objectives uh, is to compare the free version of Morningstar versus the version the library provides, how to find it, uh, learn the resources within Morningstar, give an overview of the functions, uh, research a mutual fund, research a stock, and then some of the things to uh, pay attention to when you're doing either one of those. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, you should be able to see the library's homepage here, and we are going to find our way to the Morningstar database page. Um, to do that, you can follow along with me um, and pull, pull Morningstar up on your screen or just watch. We are going to go to Find Information, Databases, and E-Research, and click there. And then we are going to click on the letter M for Morningstar and many other M databases, and then find it on the list. Okay, Morningstar Investment Research Center. Okay, so this is the, let me close that page. This is the library's interface here, Morningstar Investment Research Center provided by Appalachian State University. This next tab I'm going to show you is the free version. This is just Morningstar.com available to anyone uh, out there in the world. The main difference in the two is other than the way it looks is that the con some of the content and the um, analysis of the mutual fund uh, experts is not free on the free side. You, they ask you to pay for it and I'll point that out. Uh, whereas within the Morningstar Investment Research Center at the library, all of that's free. Okay, so that's that's the essentially the difference here. Okay, um, let's see. I'll click my notes here and make sure that we aren't missing anything. Okay. Let's move on. Um, back to the Morningstar Investment Research Center. Uh, let's start first with some of the help and education resources that you can use. Uh, if you are a beginning investor or an intermediate investor, uh, Morningstar's tools on how to use its service can be very helpful in this help and education tab is one place to go. Uh, first, they have various user guides that are very um, easy to read and understand about how to actually use the Morningstar Investment Service. Then they move into investment topics if you are a new investor uh, or are looking for topics on something a little more advanced. Uh, then they have an investment classroom and a lot of other things here. So if you were uh, looking at for to learn about mutual funds, you could click on the funds curriculum and work through um, what a mutual fund that is, what net, net asset value means, and then moving on and on down the list. Certainly there's other places that you can get basic investment information on the web, uh, and perhaps some of you have uh, retirement accounts through Fidelity, Vanguard, TIAA, Crest, and usually within those services there's investment investor education uh, resources too. too. Uh, one of the fundamental concepts of business and financial research is that you Try to compare sources uh, and see what the different analysts say um, and what the different services say. Some, some writing styles make more sense to you than others. So compare what you can. So uh, this is, we'll stick with Morningstar today. So that's the help in education. Uh, they do have other um, useful things if you are a real um, investment nerd uh, where you can read uh, Morningstar newsletters on a variety of things. They have articles and videos that come out with their and from their investment experts on all kinds of things. If you wanted to track that, um, 
and then you can follow individual markets, all kinds of stuff. But we're going to focus on the basics today. And we're going to assume, I'm going to assume that what a lot of you want to come here to do is you have um, some retirement options to make and you, uh, your Appalachian gives you the name of some mutual funds and you want to try and find out as much information you can about that. So let's start with that um, as uh, our first scenario for searching. What you would do is just simply with the name of the fund or what is referred to as the stock symbol or mutual fund symbol or ticker symbol is just type in that fund up there. So I'm going to do the value um, Vanguard 500, that's F-I-N-F, F -I, yeah, Vanguard 500 Index Fund. It's one of the big funds out there. It's available to Appalachian employees as one of their investment options and I would just type that in and do the search. Okay. So what you have in front of you is the results screen and we'll go over that a little bit um, in just more detail in a moment. Let's switch to the free version and just compare the difference here. Okay. So in the free version I'm going to do the same search and here's our results. And this is what, if you can see where my uh, hand is, the mouse is, the fund analysis, there is a, a, a symbol there, a plus sign, that costs money. Um, and then the stewardship, all this analyst report here, all of this stuff costs money on the free side. But you do get basic information, the star rating, the analyst rating, uh, and a variety of other things, uh, just not the other stuff. So back to here where everything is wide open and available to you, uh, you can get, uh, we can start with some of the basics. This is fund performance over the years, comparing it to other stock or other mutual funds of similar nature. The S&P 500, is that, that's what this particular fund tracks. Uh, and then you can also tune in to, this is an important thing to pay attention to with mutual funds, is the expense ratio or the expense cost. There's kind of a rule of thumb among investors for mutual funds that the expense percentage there that shows should be below 1% in almost all cases. Uh, that expenses, uh, if it's above 1%, the mutual fund managers are have too much administrative costs associated with that and it, it hurts the performance of the mutual fund and what your actual return is. So anything below 1% is generally good. Uh, a lot of these index funds which we're looking at from Vanguard, from Fidelity, from a, a lot of different providers, the expenses are going to be um, super, super low. You can see this one is 0.17 uh, of a percent. So that would be something that you can find in Morningstar. The next thing that's uh, useful to understand about Morningstar is the star rating system. Uh, it's a one to five star with five star being what they consider the best and then anything in the middle you know as it moves down towards one um, being less than the best. Uh, four star is, is certainly good. Um, this star rating is a look backwards in time to how the fund is performed against its peers um, and the market and you, if you've watched any kind of a commercial about investment sources they'll say something like uh, what do they what do they say? Future performance is not a guarantee uh, based on looking in the past or something like that. So the star rating is a uh, track record uh, in the past, and it does give some indication of how well they've done over time. Okay, um, they have another analyst, what's called an analyst rating. If you click on the fund analysis, and this is what's really awesome about Morningstar. This is the fund analysis that's not for free. Um, it's only available through the library. And we've got Michael Rawson has written this uh, dated April 2015. That's not too long ago. Vanguard 500 index is one of the best S&P 500 funds available. And then he goes on to write and answer why. And it's usually if you, if, uh, if you understand financial terminology in, in any shape, form, or fashion, you can usually follow. Uh, what's written in these. So there's various factors, the process pillar of how the form, uh, the process of investing that the fund follows, 
the performance, the people. It analyzes the people who actually work for the for this particular or work on this mutual fund, how long they've been there, how successful they've been, the parent company, which is Vanguard in this case, the price uh, compared to its competitors. Okay, all that feeds into what we see here as the Morningstar analyst rating, which is here, and this is a gold, and they have I think it's gold, silver, bronze and then you don't have a rating below that. This is supposed to be a, 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 for, a look forward. So um, based on those, those pillars that we just talked about briefly, they're in good shape and moving forward they should continue to be, Vanguard 500 should continue to be a well-performing mutual fund. That's what uh, Morningstar is telling us. Okay, we've got uh, basic performance, of course, the market's been struggling this year, so you can see the total return for this year is in the negative territory. But if you look back and if you track the funds 2000, uh, back to 2013, that was a big year for mutual funds and stocks, uh, and then it goes from there. Then this is really interesting, is if, let's say, in, your, in our investment choices um, here at Appalachian, we have other options other than Vanguard 500. Well, why I pick something else? Well, this category medalist here are the other gold and silver and bronze rated funds uh, from Morningstar that are very similar in the way they uh, function to this Vanguard 500 index. So that's a way to get a com competitor's list, so to speak, of similar funds. So another major, a big com major competitor to Vanguard is Fidelity, and here's their Fidelity Spartan 500 index fund, which is also a gold analyst rating. Uh, and that might be a choice that you would make on which fund you would go with there. Okay? All right. So if we go back to the quote page, the overview page, you're certainly welcome to read any of this uh, information here and learn more about the fund. Uh, it's useful probably for a lot of people to kind of get a sense of what companies are with are, are invested in within the Vanguard 500 index fund and this shows you the top five Apple, Microsoft, Exxon, Johnson & Johnson, General Electric. You've probably all heard of those companies. If you click on the more link it will take you to a longer list and you can actually if you wanted to you could export into a, a Microsoft Excel and a, a complete list of all the companies. I don't think that they invest in all 500 Standard & Poor's stocks, but they get pretty close. Uh, so that's, that shows you everything that's in there. This can be useful um, if you have any kind, if you are an investor that's interested in social issues and you're just concerned about is my mutual fund investing in, in this company or that company, and you, know, you can just see um, how much so your funds are investing in companies that you really like or you have concerns about. So that's how that can be useful to you. You can also see what regions of the country the fund is invested in. This is the Standard & Poor's 500 is a U.S. based mostly um, a list of, of companies that's U.S. based. So you can see that the, all the companies here are 98.5 per six 98.56% of them are U.S. based, and that makes sense here. Then they have just a touch of things from um, other countries, so that's how that works. Okay, so I think I covered the basics of searching for a particular mutual fund. Uh, there are other types of funds out there, and probably if you get more experience, you'll just remember the, uh, the ticker symbol for your fund. This is a bond-based fund um, that is, is available to a lot of us to invest in, Fidelity Spartan Bond Index, three-star rated. Uh, the fund analysis gives it a bronze rating, and then we go from there. Okay, so you can do all kinds of things there. So that's your first functional approach uh, to using Morningstar. Uh, the next one would be uh, a portfolio x-ray. Okay, so this scenario is you have selected five, six, seven mutual funds, and you want to see all together what 
is this doing for me as an investor? And Morningstar makes that easy. Some of your investment services, Fidelity, Vanguard, TIA, Craft, might have something similar where you can get a total view of how your mutual funds are working. So I'm going to click from here the portfolio x-ray. Okay, so here you type in the funds. And you could do a dollar value or a percentage value. Percentage value is, is much easier. So we could do 33% for that. Then I'm going to just pick a few that I know. How big of a nerd am I that I know all these uh, fun ticker symbols by heart, right? Isn't that terrible? Okay. okay. So these are three uh, mutual funds that are out there. And I'm going to, okay, yeah. So I got 100% percentage and I'm going to show my instant x-ray. Okay, so this is really awesome too in Morningstar. So my three funds uh, equally invested in, this is telling me how my assets are allocated. Okay, US stocks 95%, cash 1%, that's that little green sliver, and then 4% is in foreign stocks. It goes into sectors that are covered, basic materials, consumer cyclical, financial services, real estate, communications, energy, industrial, things like that. I had a question the last time that I did this session uh, on can you dig down deeper in the portfolio x-ray to see what percentage of uh, uh, the portfolio is in basic materials and what companies are those. I couldn't figure out how to do that at the time and I've done some research and I still can't but you can do that on the individual mutual fund basis. So that's what I would advise there, is digging down into the holdings of an individual fund. This, this x-ray doesn't seem to do that, uh, but there's a lot of other things that are up here that, that could be useful to you um, as well. Okay, Stock types, um, these are the individual companies within the funds, high yield, distressed, hard assets. This gets into really heavy duty financial terminology and understanding and if that's beyond what you want to focus on you know you can just forget about it and trust the uh, more basic analysis type things here. Average mutual fund expense ratio for that set of three that's still below one so that tells me that overall my expenses are still in pretty good check um, and then there's other analysis here. Okay so I think uh, that's another basic uh, feature of Morningstar that I would encourage people to uh, learn how to use uh, quite a bit more. Okay, moving right along, we'll go back home and we'll move into um, the third scenario of uh, researching a company, researching an individual company's stock. And you can do that also within the ticker uh, search field over here. And I'm going to select Coca-Cola. Their ticker uh, is KO, not for knockout, but for Coca-Cola. And you'll see a lot of similarities between what we uh, find in the mutual fund analysis and the stock analysis here. So Coca-Cola is listed as a four-star fund. We've got the stock price here. They don't have an expense ratio. An expense ratio for Coca-Cola that doesn't exist, uh, in this, as it does for mutual funds. But in the stock analysis, we get some interesting things here. Okay, they do, you know, um, a fair value estimate. So they would say this is forty-three dollars per share is a fair value currently, uh, or as of nine twenty-four for um, Coca-Cola. So is the price higher, is the price lower? Right now it's running $39. You should consider buying it lower, consider selling it. A lot of things here. Um, more investment terminology here. The bull market people who think Coca-Cola is going to do well, the bulls out there, you've heard that probably before. You've got three talking points uh, about why that's the case. And then the people who aren't so keen on Coke, um, We've got a three, two or three talking points here. 
And then you can see that the analyst, analyst's report is just kind of set up differently. Coke is focused on cost control and brand investment, and it's why economic moat is intact. <laughs> economic moat. Okay. Um, and then we can read through there. Investment thesis, economic moat. Ec economic moat is, is kind of bizarre. It treats the company like a castle, and everything that protects them and makes them great is considered the width and depth of their moat. So Coca-Cola, of course, has a super strong brand, incredibly wide distribution, uh, great marketing, great brand reputation, all that kind of stuff. So that's what we're talking about there. Um, more nerd, more nerd speak. I'm sorry, but it's awesome. <laughs> Valuation, risk, management of the company, overview, uh, and things like that. Um, one thing I didn't say in the uh, when you're looking at these analysts, say you, uh, whether it's a mutual fund analyst or a stock analyst, you can click on the gentleman's name in this case, and you can see what else uh, he's written about. So in this case. It uh, looks like uh, he writes about beverage companies and auto parts. That seems to be his area uh, of expertise. And then this iRobot, I'm not sure what that is. So you can see that they, people, analysts tend to focus on a couple of areas where they uh, build their reputation and expertise. So you can track the authority and credibility of one of these writers um, that way. Okay. Um, other things that you can do here are um, compare, no, that's not it. Um, you can look at ratios, financial information, uh, and lots of things here about individual companies. These ratios are very different for companies versus mutual funds, uh, and are probably something, unless you were like a super detailed investor that you wouldn't worry so much about. But they're here. Um, I do teach a number of classes in the College of Business on doing uh, business analysis and financial research, and this kind of stuff that we're looking at now um, is super important to students and professors, but it may not be as important to the casual investor uh, that I'm assuming most of us are here. Okay. So I'm moving uh, pretty quickly, and uh, since I can do that, I'm going to point out a couple of other things. Uh, back to the mutual funds, I'm not sure how many of you have heard of exchange-traded funds. If you uh, have not heard of them, exchange-traded funds are, are similar to mutual funds, but they're different in one important way. Uh, a mutual fund trades on the stock park market one time a day at 5 o'clock or, or thereabouts. Um, whatever the price it is, whatever the price is, that's the trade. So there's only one price per day for a mutual fund. Compare that to a company like Coca-Cola, which has um, I don't know how many prices throughout the day. It's constantly being traded. The price goes up, goes down. Um, and exchange traded funds work like that. They are mutual funds, so to speak, but they trade like a stock. So you can buy them and sell them at any point during the day. Okay, and usually for exchange traded funds, there is a uh, exact, there is a Vanguard 500 exchange traded fund. I don't happen to have that memorized, but it's out there uh, and available. So that's something that more, more and more people each year are doing, working with exchange traded funds as opposed to regular mutual funds. And I'm not, I haven't compared what's available at Appalachian enough to know how many exchange traded funds are available to us. Um, I don't have the answer to that. Okay, um, let's see, what else do we have to cover here? There are fund screeners that I usually don't uh, cover in this um, workshop where you can uh, build a mutual fund based on a variety of topics. Here. If you want to learn more about this, the in the help and education section, the user's guide uh, gives a lot of good advice on how to build a basic screen for a mutual fund, how to build a basic screen for companies, exchange traded funds, a variety of things. So you can do you can do those screeners that way. There are little hidden gems within Morningstar as well. 
like uh, fun favorites. You can click on something like that. And this gives you just a long, 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 long list. You see multiple pages here of the gold star analyst rated funds, silver stars, and, and goes on. You can sort the list. You can search within the list for a fund. We should be able to find our BFI and X fund within this list. Should be on that page somewhere. Yeah, right there at the top. So you can do things like that within Morningstar. Uh, and that's it. Um, I do have time for questions here at the end if you want to type anything in. Um, my final bit of advice is investment education using Morningstar and all the other services that you might have available to you grows over time. So if you want to become a better, more knowledgeable investor, uh, and understand what's happening with your retirement funds, I would just try to learn a little bit at a time. So read about your fund a couple times a year, compare that to uh, some of the other funds, read about what's going on in the market, um, and, it, and, and it grows. It builds uh, just like an education in anything. You just build upon your knowledge uh, as you move forward. Okay. So I've uh, gone pretty quickly, so I will stop and see if anybody has any questions. Uh, you can chat them in if you want, and I'll see if I can answer them. Okay, I don't see any questions coming in yet. If anybody's going to type a question in, perhaps just say, I'm, I've got one, and then you can type it in. Otherwise, we can, um, we can call it a day. Okay, well, it looks like uh, I've answered all your questions and have done a fantastic job, right? So, no, hopefully I accomplished my objectives to give you a good overview, and um, we'll leave it at that. <laughs>